There's no doubting the usefulness of a good vise on a proper workbench. But good vices are expensive, or time consuming to make, and cheap ones just aren't worth the trouble. But what if I told you there was a different way? What if I told you a bench without a vise could do everything a vise can do, and more? We're going to go over the basic means of holding work viselessly, then cover some basic viceless woodworking operations in practice. So stick around. What's more powerful than a vice, you ask? Nothingness. At least, highly localized nothingness, filled with air and surrounded by wood on one side. Most people just call them holes. But we're not most people, are we? No, we're woodworkers. A bench full of holes is a bench full of possibilities. And if I'm gonna impress upon you anything, it's that a bench that looks like Swiss cheese may not float in your bathtub with your other bath toys, but it will provide you with more ways to hold your work than a 10-armed octopus with shells for hands. Holes enable bench dogs, super bench dogs, and perhaps the most powerful work holding device ever invented in the history of work holding, the Holdfast. Why do they call it a Holdfast? Because that's why. When struck from the top, the Holdfast seats itself into the bench and clamps down on whatever is underneath this sweet little foot. When struck from the back, the hold is released. Oh, and don't forget the little leather sock. A pair of these can do anything most vices can do and more. Don't believe me? Can your vice do this? Or this? How about this? Throw some low effort jigs and battens in the mix and you have a work holding force to be reckoned with. Look, I'm not here to dunk on vices, but here's the thing. While you're actually getting work done smacking these cast iron candy canes around, you'd be saving up your hard earned cash for that Veritas quad screw gigavice that all the successful YouTubers use. A good vice and hold fast are by no means mutually exclusive. But if I had to pick one, now granted, you can't just throw these things in any old hole. Optimal hole depth is going to depend on your manufacturer's recommendation, and for these Gramercy tools hold fasts, that depth is one and three quarters of an inch. And by the way, just get a Gramercy tools hold fast. Don't be a hero and try and save 50 cents by buying some cheap piece of junk on eBay, or Etsy, or Alibaba, or Tamu, or however you say it. I'm not endorsed by these guys, and I don't get anything by plugging them. They're just the best bang for your buck. The Holdfast is an ingenious woodworking tool, but for the way of the viceless, it's only half the story. Let's talk stops. Planing is imperative to woodworking like water is imperative to life. Your bench needs planing stops regardless of your vice or Holdfast status. There are more ways to stop planing than there are stars in the sky. At least if you're creative enough. In essence, a stop can be any object fixed to your bench. Perhaps the simplest thing you can do is to clamp down a piece of scrap wood. What a dedicated planing stop gets you is refined height adjustment, better grip, speed, and consistency. My personal bench is equipped with a pair of Lee Valley aluminum diving board planing stops. They're all right. My biggest gripe is they get jammed up after a few good planes and they take too long to open and close. If only there was another way. classic planing stop is more or less a block of wood that pokes out of the top of your workbench. The height of this is adjusted with the joiner's mallet you're already using to smack your holdfast around with. How's that for synergy?
You could stop at wood, but if you wanted your bark to have a little more bite, attach an iron planing stop. You can buy or make these. Rex has his DIY way, and this one is a crucible tool. What's that, you ask? How do you prevent your stock from kicking out as you're planing? I'm glad you brought it up. Throw a doe's foot on there. It's just a 90 degree notch cut in the end of a thin board. They take like 30 seconds to make. This particular bench is equipped with a center rail. They're not strictly necessary for viceless woodworking, but they can be quite handy. Keep tools out of the way and on deck by putting them in the slots. You can bump it up a notch and you have yourself another planing stop. Or you can remove it all together. Now you have room for bar clamps or whatever. On the vertical face of the bench, we have the crochet. Not only is this an effective planing stop, but it can also act as an extra hand when used with a hold fast. What if your stock is too small to be managed on the side of the bench, but too thin to be worked with on the top? A couple of ways of going about this. You can create a platform with another piece of stock to bump things up a notch, or you can throw another device in the mix. One of my personal favorites, the hand screw. If you've never used one of these things before, boy, you're really missing out. These clamps are worth their own video, but we're not doing that today. As you can see, they work especially well when paired with holdfasts. Now I recommend having at least two of them, but you know what they say about clamps. You can never have enough! <laughs> it feels like cheating for this video because it basically is a vice. But mini. And you're not committed to putting it in one place. Locking stuff down on top of your bench can be a huge advantage. Plus they do everything you would normally use a clamp for, like glue-ups. So we have all these methods and all these handy tools, but what about the most important tool of all? The workbench. Workbenches are an immense topic. That's widely discussed across the entire internet. Rubeau, Shaker, Nicholson, Moravian, Roman, it can all be quite overwhelming. I said this before and I'll say it again. There are good benches and there are bad benches, but there is no perfect workbench. And anyone who says otherwise is trying to sell you something. A good bench is rigid, massive, has adequate workable area, proper height, and is capable of performing any necessary woodworking operation. That's it. The preferred style bench for viceless woodworking is the English joiner's bench, also known as the Nicholson style bench. Its simple construction and relatively small amount of materials needed make it a great choice for the budget conscious woodworker. The most basic version of these can be built in a weekend with some 2x12s, some nails, and a case of poison. There's got to be a million different ways to build one of these benches, but the defining element for the English joiner's bench is the aprons. Not only do they provide rigidity, but also that coveted surface area for all those holes you'll need. The bench I've been demonstrating on is a bit more of a robust take on the classic Nicholson style bench. I call it the Mighty Nicholson. I have a whole video on this bench, so be sure to check it out if you're interested. We've covered the basic means of holding work viselessly, so now it's time to do a deeper dive into more practical applications. This is going to be presented in rapid succession to save some time. So sit back, relax, and get ready to bang your hammers and your head. <laughs>
probably more than that, but you get the idea. Viceless woodworking is only limited by your own creativity or ability to Google. And when you do finally get that nice vice, your viceless tricks are just as viable as ever. I'm sure I'll throw one on the old Mighty Nicholson one day, but for now, I'm having too much fun swinging hammers around. That about wraps things up for today. If you found this video useful, then do me a favor and body slam that like button. If this isn't your first video of mine that you survived, then consider taking our relationship to the next level and body slamming that subscribe button. Okay, I'm done. Thanks for hanging out with me this long. Thanks for watching. Godspeed.